Good morning. Welcome to Bethel this morning. Wherever you are, we welcome you. I have a few announcements for you this morning. It's concerning our non-perishable food items that we are collecting. So there are going to be canned goods. So check your bulletin for all the information. So we would like for you to bring the donation to the church by Tuesday, November 24th, by, by 12 p.m. So more information is in the bulletin. Before we start, let's take a deep breath together. To allow the spirit that connects us with one another to be the spirit within us that allows us to see one another as human beings regardless of flaws, imperfection, and the messy people we are. The spirit that gives life. The spirit, the life when it's taken away from one affects all of us. We are here to receive Christ. We are called to proclaim Christ. We are sent to show Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. To the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you, saw, you clean us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit, and we know our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is on page five in your bulletin, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Of Christ, 
The grace of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you are the Holy Lawgiver. You are the salvation of your people. By your Spirit, we know us in your covenant of love and train us to care tenderly for all our neighbors. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson is from the book of Judges, chapter four, verses one to seven. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Caden, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Haresh HaGoim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinoam from Kadesh and Naphtali, and said to him, the Lord, the God of Israel commands you, go take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kishan with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Thus ends the first reading. Our psalm for today is Psalm 90. The cantor will sing the verses in plain type, and the congregation will sing the bold-faced verses. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Turn us back to the dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sign. The span of our life is seventy years, perhaps in strength and in eighteen. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly. And 
regards the power of your wrath, who rightly fears your indignation. That we may apply our hearts of wisdom. Nah, I just did it for fun. I didn't want to finish it. I know, I was like, I guess. I want to finish it. It keeps it lively, too. The second lesson is from the first book of Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Thus ends the second reading. Lord of all in need, search out to all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at the rest from their labors, especially Heidi Lofgren, friend of Janet Baker and Catherine Christensen, wife of Pastor Gordon Christensen, who died last week in Arizona. Bethel was Gordon's home congregation where he grew up, and his memorial service was held here a few years ago. He was also the coordinator of our GLEAMS program that provided meals and activities for seniors back in the 70s, and he and his family were members at the time. Funeral services for Kathy are pending and will probably have to happen after the first year. We pray for Renee, Bob, Neil and Linda, Al, Michaela, Kevin, Sophia, Ken, Virginia, Don, Art, Jackie, Cecilia, Richard and Vicki, Ethel, Liam, Doris, Myrtle, Maria, Paul, Karen, Dawn, Tyler, Doris, Eloise, Tom, Carol, Bob, Dolly, Ian, Ed, Crystal, Kristen, Pat, Connor, and family, Pamela, Susan, Neil, Deja, John, and Colleen, Alyssa, Albert, Lisa, Sandy, and Philip. We pray for hope, comfort, help, and healing as we deal with COVID-19 in our nation and in our world. At this time, we remember especially those who are most vulnerable to the disease, as well as those who are struggling with the many challenges of everyday life in a pandemic. 
We pray for the wildfires. We thank for the rain and cooler weather that have helped those who are fighting wildfires in our state. And we ask for your care for those who are recovering from the destruction. We pray for our society, giving our church unity to inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ, where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in with us. We pray for the medical personnel and first responders. We remember all the men, women, and families of those who put their lives on the line for others. We pray for those in the military. We remember all the men, women, and families of those who put their lives on the line for others. And we ask you bless them as they serve to protect and help us. We pray for our benevolence. We pray for the work of ELCA World Hunger in bringing food and long-term solutions to the hungry throughout the world. We pray for our church, our Lord, for Pastor Mitch, our church council, our church staff members, our COVID-19 reopening committee, the Sierra Pacific Synod, Bishop Mark Holmerud, and the people of Bethel as we worship and serve together. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, the another, the, to another two, to another one to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. The, then the one who had received the, on, the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I know that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the talent, the 10 talents. For to all those you have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. 
but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Our sermon hymn is on page 9 in your bulletin, How Small Our Span of Life. small a span of life, O oh God, our years from birth till death. A single beat within thy heart, the catching of a breath. A drop within the ocean's deep, a grain upon the shore. A flash of light before we sleep, you see the song no more. And yet our speed of life is spanned by your infinity. Our tick of time on earth is caught in your eternity. While suns and stars spin endlessly through depths of cosmic space, while aeons roll and ages pass, you rolled us in your grace. O oh Christ, you left eternity to plunge the time swift stream, to share the shortness in a span our mortal lives redeem. You filled your cross closed years with love, you loved us in the end. And touch us with your eyes in life that all may time transcend. We thank you, God, for kindly faith that lights our transcendent years. Illumining a pilgrimage through mist and doubt and fears. For hope that sees a life beyond the swiftly passing days. For love both human and divine that lifts our hearts to pray. Teach us to count the days. Teach us to make the days count. Carol Sarkisian was the principal of Hoover High School back in the early 90s, and I was able to be her intern. I got to follow her around all semester. She made each day, each moment count. I remember her mantra. I have only two years before I retire, and I have to do everything in my power to help these kids be successful in life. Her influence in the school was amazing. I went to principal meetings with her and other Fresno area principals. The others were exhausted, tired out, unfocused, but not Carol Sarkisian. She wanted to really tackle all those problems all at once. I don't think she started out her career being such an exceptional educator. I think God gave her a few talents. And I think she developed those talents even further. She could even speak six languages fluently. In today's gospel reading, we hear of a slave who was given five talents to care for, to use wisely, while his master was away. Let's talk about the word talent. 
I've always thought that a talent was a coin, like a silver dollar, just some pittance, a little coin. But recently, I found out that a talent was an amount of money equal to 15 years worth of wages for a laborer. 15 years worth of wages. And the first slave was given five of those. Wow. I can actually relate to the owner of this story. Every year we take a trip to Minnesota and I find a caretaker or a steward to care for my house, my cats. We've tried several caretakers or stewards but it's my brother Roy who has been just like the steward who did great things with those five talents. Just listen to this. We came home from our trip to find our broken beyond repair garbage disposal. It had been taken apart and rebuilt by Roy. Wow, our mini blinds, which couldn't swivel uh, open or shut anymore, all were fixed by Roy. Our overhead lights in the garage miraculously worked again. And our squeaky doors no longer squeaked. Like the owner in the parable, I was overjoyed. I wanted to repay him over and over. Teach us to count the days. Teach us to make the days count. Randy Alcorn, who wrote the Treasure Principle book once said, God owns everything and I am God's money manager. Alcorn goes on to say, I needed to adopt a steward's mentality toward the assets God has entrusted, not given to me. A steward manages assets for the owner's benefit. The steward carries no sense of entitlement to the assets he or she manages. It's the steward's job to find out what the owner wants done with the assets. Then the steward carries out that will. What if I had come home from Minnesota and my locks were changed and Roy said he owned the house <gasps> and cats? Imagine how God feels when we, the stewards of God's riches, claim ownership. Whenever we feel like owners of the money and possessions we care for, it should be a red flag. A couple of days ago, November 9th and 10th, was the sad anniversary of Kristallnacht when in 1938, a thousand Jewish synagogues were destroyed and 7,500 Jewish businesses were vandalized and looted all across Germany and into Austria. 91 Jews were killed during that 48-hour rampage, and thousands of Jewish men were sent off to concentration camps. One of those men that was sent off to Auschwitz was actually a young boy named Tommy Bergenthal. He calls himself a lucky child because miracle after miracle after miracle helped him stay alive all through World War II and beyond. He finally, finally saw freedom. God gave him at least one talent and that was life. If I were him, I probably would have taken that talent, buried it, and sat by the pool in the cool, cool shade, drinking my lemonade for the rest of my days. I had done my time. That's what I would have said if I were Tommy Bergenthal. But that's not what Tommy did. Instead, when he became an adult, he discovered and developed many talents. And he spent those talents so wisely. With his law degree, his passion for human rights, and his memories of suffering, Tommy worked tirelessly for decades to help put into place international laws 
to protect the rights of every person. Teach us to count the days. Teach us to make the days count. When I was in high school and college, I had a tithe box. It was just something I figured out on my own. It was actually a little square jewelry box, and you'd open it, and the ballerina would twirl around with the little mirror. I think Every kid that I knew had that exact same box. We all had them in different colors. Each time I earned money from babysitting or working as a car hop or playing organ at church, I would place my tithe, 10% of the money I earned, into that box. I thought it was really fun coming up with meaningful ways to spend that money. One time, when I was visiting an elderly great aunt, she told me that she used to love reading the Bible, but she can't do it anymore because the print is just too small and her eyes are not that great anymore. I think I had 20 bucks in my tithe box, and so I went out to the Christian bookstore and I purchased a large print Bible for Aunt Ethel. She couldn't believe that I would spend my money on such a gift for her. That's funny, <laughs> my money. <laughs> Many years later, I found out what happens when you hold tightly to the money in your possession. After moving to California in the fall of 1988, we had no church. Well, we attended Trinity when we first got to town, but we weren't really eh, involved yet, too involved, and we definitely weren't giving. Well, we were so concerned about money because we had saved up a lot of money to make the trip to California, but neither of us were finding jobs, and our money was dwindling pretty quickly. So we didn't give any money to anybody or to the church, and we froze that that winter, and we were broke, 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 broke. I heard a stewardship presentation a few years after that by Mark Allen Powell, a Lutheran seminary teacher. Mark Powell emphasized that whatever you give your money to, your heart will follow. Give first, and then your heart will be passionate about where you invest your money. Here's a modern day parable. On an island in the Pacific lived a woman named Sarita, who all the other islanders agreed was quite plain and lacked any of the social graces expected of women of the island. She was, in the eyes of the islanders and in the eyes of her father, not likely to marry because she was a woman without worth. Then one day, a man named Johnny Lingo appeared and offered her father the unheard of sum of eight cows to marry Sarita. The islanders were shocked because no one had ever paid more than five or six cows for a wife not even for the most valuable women of the island. Johnny, however, paid the eight cows and took his new wife home to his own island. Months later, a visitor to the islands heard the story of Johnny Lingo and his eight cow wife and decided to visit the couple to find out why Johnny would pay such a high price for a woman viewed as having little or no value. To his surprise, the visitor met Sarita and found her to be stunningly beautiful and one of the most graceful women he had ever seen. Confused, he asked Johnny why his wife seemed to be so different from the description he had heard. Johnny's answer was simple. The change was because she was an eight-cow wife now. Johnny's love for his new wife followed his money. Everyone involved was transformed. In terms of giving to the church, 
we might not be in the habit of tithing, giving 10% of what we earn, but our hearts will be transformed if our money goes there. Next week is Stewardship Sunday. I promise you that I will spend a chunk of time looking over God's talents, especially money, that I'm taking care of at the moment. And I'll be praying and listening for God's still, small voice to let me know how much God wants me to give back to the rightful owner. Randy Alcorn, who wrote that nice little book about uh, giving, he had a friend named Dixie Farley. And she had an interesting perspective. She said, we are most like God when we are giving. Then Randy adds this thought to her thought. Gaze upon Christ long enough and you'll become more of a giver. Give long enough and you'll become like Christ. Teach us to count the days. Teach us to make the days count. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord of all grace, bless you now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look up on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The closing hymn is on page 10 in your bulletin. Take my life that I, that I may be. That I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let me follow ceaseless praise. Take my hand and let them move, not the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and plentiful for thee. In the life that I may be. Consecrate, the Lord, do to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my silver and my gold, not my mutant, but they'll hold. Take my intellect and use it every good they're so true. Take my 
your life the time may be Consecrate, Lord, do to thee Take my moments and my days Let them flow in ceaseless praise My voice and let it sing Always down the Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my life, then I will be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let me flow in ceaseless praise. Take my will and make it thine, it will say the Lord that mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. Sibling in Christ, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Be safe. Thanks be to God.